What are these shiny pucks and why are they so awesome? Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now what we are having here today is a very interesting DAC slash headphone amp. And some of you are probably already familiar with the brand and this product. I also reviewed the version 2.0 like a year ago when I was just talking hand in front of the camera. But now we have V2.1 and I'll go through what changed, what didn't, should you even care. Now, uh, if you haven't met Iwanda or Iwanda Power DAC so far, I'll quickly try to explain what it is. But just before that, a short trivia about its name. You can see it's actually E1 DA and it is like this because the creator of this deck, uh, he comes from Russia and he's called Ivan. And he thought it would be nice like a play of words if he called his deck E1. It's like pretty close to Ivan, as close as possible. And the extension part, DA, means DA, which is actually yes in Russian language. Also in Serbian, which is my own language too, because yeah, we have same Slavic background. So the literal translation of the name of the brand would be even yes. But I guess we pronounce it Iwanda. And guess what that reminds me of? So back to the DAC itself, this is actually a very interesting concept because there is no traditional DAC chip inside. You, you get no Sabre here or AK, uh, Burr Brown, whatever. It's basically a pulse width modulation DA converter. It's a fairly technical story. You don't really need to listen about that, but as you'll see, it can produce pretty great results. So let's start with some basic functionalities. What we do get here is basically one digital input, which is USB. You get the cable in, in the box, like traditional PC cable, that's it. A lot of people asked, can you use this with your phone? Yes, you can, but then like additional power bank is recommended because it draws a lot of power also, it heats quite a lot. This is not something that you would like to carry inside of your pockets. It would definitely feel too hot. So for all intents and purposes, in my own opinion, this is not a portable bag. It is small. It looks like it could be portable, but it's not in my opinion. So we'll treat it as a desktop product. That said, same as the first edition, you just get this metal casing and there are no rubber or silicon feet provided and that's something I, I, I didn't like on the first one but there's a slight difference between these two versions while the last version was completely flat you didn't have any sort of screws on it and it was just sliding over your desktop this one has screws on both sides so this one will scratch your desktop Fortunately, solution is quite cheap. You get these kind of silicon feet or rubber feet. They're so cheap, you can buy them on eBay, AliExpress, Amazon, whatever is the, the most convenient for you. Stick four of these and you'll get stable device. But I, I'm just wondering why, why you don't provide four of these to begin with? Because it would be so cheap to, to add these and it, it would be convenient in my opinion. Other than that, outside, looking from the outside, I see no differences, but there is one important difference that uh, V2.1 is all about, actually, and that's this little thing, which is an adapter that will take 2.5 millimeters balanced output. And that's the only analog output on both of these versions, it will take it and turn it into a much more common 3.5 millimeters single added ended output. And if you're wonder, well, why can't I buy this one and use it with an old version? No, you cannot because it's not meant to be used that way. You cannot just connect to separate channels 
in a balanced design and expect them to work immediately. It's explicitly forbidden, actually, on the manufacturer's website. It says it could damage the device. It's designed, it's, it's completely differential. It's not meant to be boiled down into single-ended out. Version V2.1 fixed that. Now you can use it as a balanced out. That's like a native mode. And you can use this adapter and use single-ended output. Furthermore, when you do that, when you use this single-ended adapter, you have two modes of operation. One is like uh, what you would expect to use just one single channel of this amp. And in that case, you get half the rated power, which is somewhere around 600 milliwatts for balanced out, I think. Half of that if you are using single-ended out. But there is another mode called single-ended boost, I believe. And if you engage that one, somehow the device will redirect all the power from both of the channels, balanced channels, into that single-ended out, and you'll get equal amount of power but it comes at a cost. Left and right channels do have some sort of crosstalk and sound fidelity takes a hit a little bit. So in my experience, I actually preferred using just normal single-ended out with half the power because it's still plenty of power, more than enough to drive very sensitive but great VRM1. This was like a really nice combo. Also, send the audio AIVA, which do come with balanced cables, so in reality you would use them directly without any sort of adapter. But I'm just making my point here that this device, even in a single-ended mode with half the output power, still has enough of grunt to power most of the headphones on the market without any problem whatsoever. Now that said, another really important thing that we have to mention before moving to the sound quality is what sort of options and settings do you get when using Iwanda PowerDAC V2.1? Well, the same ones you did with V2. And that's like a fully functional DSP. And yes, that means that there is an app that you can download for both your Android phones and iOS phones. And from there, you can alter a lot of things, including like some basic ones, uh, like bass, treble response, and then some more advanced ones, like uh, making your sound more dry or wet. All the way of having PEQ, that's like parametric equalizer. Just the amount of tweaks that you can do to the sound and its tonality is definitely unmatched, at least at any device that I've tested so far or heard about. There are even presets that you can download for specific headphones models to make them uh, closer to the Harman headphone curve or some other curve and etc. etc. And that said, let's move to the most important thing and that's sound quality. Now here everything is the same as the last time around. This little thing sounds exceptionally well, especially for its price. If we leave all the DSP and EQ and tinkering aside and we just use it as it is, it gives pretty neutral sound with just a slight hint of warmth in the bass region. Baseline is otherwise pretty resolving, fast. It's not something that sounds slow in any way or sluggish, but there is a little bit of warmth, a little bit of thickening of the bass and mid bass notes, which actually sounds very pleasant and its effect is very moderate. It's not, as I said, overwhelming. Mid range is clear, it's transparent, there is a lot of details to be heard, Vocals sound natural, both male and female. You do get a lot of fullness and details from the vocals. There are no nasties. There is no any sort of uh, overcooked edginess and raspiness, thinness, anything like that. 
And when it comes to the highest frequencies, this is a really detailed deck. I don't know anything at this price level and even higher that's more incisive, that can offer more details into these highest registers. And the soundstage feels very nice. It's not particularly wide, but it's not narrow also. And it has a very nice sense of depth. You feel like it can project some tones that are deeper into the recording and their echoes and things like that pretty nicely. And that leaves us with dynamics and the overall punch of the sound, which is quite decent. I'd say for the price and for the size, it's actually great, but it will not match like big desktop stack with much more power, few watts of power. That will always have like more kick and slam than this one. But if you're not comparing it directly to some bigger, ballsier and more expensive competition, you'll probably not notice anything missing. Dynamics and punchiness and liveliness of the sound as it is, is pretty, pretty good. But that said, I think it is a time for a few comparisons. Now, the first and the most logical one uh, in my mind was with Hidiz S9 Pro that I've recently reviewed, it costs 119 and it's a pretty great performer. I, I raved about it, I really loved it. This one is 80 bucks, so it is cheaper. And when it comes to the sound, they're very, very close with some small differences. They both sound pretty neutral and very close in tonality, but PowerDAC V2.1 is a little bit warmer when it comes to the bass section. Hedis here is a little bit grippier and tidier with its bass notes. Like it's just a little bit quicker and more nimble. This one is slightly warmer. Mid-range, very close, but I would say that S9 Pro has more forward mid-range. It's almost as if it's just a little bit shouty, but in a pleasant way, at least for me, because if I listen to, for example, female vocals, they tend to sound just a touch fuller and more liquid through S9 Pro, and again, just a touch drier and more recessed with PowerDAC V2.1. But it's so small a difference that you wouldn't know if you listened to this one in the morning and this one in the evening. Only in a direct comparison you could notice something like that. Now when it comes to the highest frequencies and small details retrieval, they're almost a perfect match. I cannot discern one from, from the other. But that said, I think for all intenses and purposes we can consider them almost equal sounding. I would just simply choose according to other features and needs. For example, Hidiz is a truly portable DAC. I can just attach it to my phone, it heats much less, it consumes much less power, it's smaller. On the other hand, this one consumes more power. In my opinion, it's not portable at all. It heats considerably but it does have uh, a dedicated app with a plethora of DSP functions, EQs, all of the sliders that you can tinker with and adjust the sound to be slightly warmer, drier, with more high frequency presence or bass presence or whatever you wish to do. Sonically, very close, just slight edge to Hidiz in my opinion, but completely different use case scenarios and different strengths and weaknesses. So in my mind, it's not even a competition really, but it was just for information and to put the sound quality of this one into perspective. And another comparison that I would like to make is if you take a traditional desktop stack. So it can be any sort of budget DAC, like Topping E30, SMSL Sanskrit Tent, or shit Modi, something like that. And then you stack a decent budget amp on top of it, like Topping L30 here. 
that stack would cost around 2 250 or even 300 bucks depending on your country region import taxes and so on and regarding the sound quality you wouldn't get much what you would get is more power and with power comes more slam more kick in the bass and that especially goes with headphones that are more difficult to drive for example if you're using like very sensitive in-ears you might not notice that but with bigger more difficult loads the power of a traditional desktop solution definitely provides a little bit more punch a little bit more bite aside from that all of the details sound stage tonality everything is quite comparable and that actually makes this one a pretty sweet deal because it gets you to like 90 or 95 percent of something that's much pricier and that in most aspects doesn't really sound any better but it has a little bit more grunt and power for some it will be worth it for others it will not again the choice is yours and this actually takes me to the conclusion and the conclusion is for such a small device and also very cheap very affordable device at 80 bucks this is a pretty sweet deal like in terms of sound fidelity you basically cannot get anything significantly better up to like 2 250 and the only thing left for you to think about is are you okay with it, with its form factor with heat it dissipates also it dissipates quite a bit of heat and if you're not if you want something with physical controls then go for a traditional desktop product with switches and knobs etc if you want actually something that's portable that runs cooler something like it is here but if you think like okay i'm okay with everything this thing does and especially i'm okay with everything it doesn't do then i'll repeat the same conclusion as i did with the previous version it's a mighty good deal even now it's upgraded with this single ended capability so you can actually run wider spectrum of headphones with it that was something a lot of people found annoying with the original version because it was balanced only basically that's fixed and that said it's time to finish this review thank you for watching if you liked it click that button share it with your friends also consider becoming a patron maybe that helps a lot with these unbiased reviews and see you next time bye mm -hmm.